What's up everybody, this is Cubastic, and in this video I will try to solve this impossible puzzle. Apart from the fact that it's very complex and it looks cool, it's also very special, because I printed it on my 3D printer. Many of you guys enjoyed my previous video about 3D printing, so I'll be very happy if you back me up here this time as well. Subscribe to my channel, because unfortunately many people watch my videos without a subscription. I really want to give you cool, high-quality content, even though I'm making videos at home right now, not in the studio, I spend three times as much energy making videos for you and I struggle to make them very interesting. So please subscribe to the channel right now if you haven't, and if you have already done it, don't forget to ring the notification bell. Because only if the bell is activated, you will be able to become one of the first to see my new videos and chat with me in the comment section. So. Start commenting right now, let's go! You asked me a lot of questions and one of the most popular was show us how 3D printing works, what does it take to print something on a 3D printer? And in this video I'm going to describe step by step how I created this. I haven't created it yet, but I'm going to show you right now the process of creating this puzzle. And I hope you will understand the awesomeness of 3D printing. Let's begin right now. To print something, we have to find what we want to print. There is a large number of websites and applications on the Internet with a list of 3D printing models. Of course, there are many puzzles too. We are going to take one of the coolest, one of the most popular and awesome puzzles of all time. This is a 3D puzzle called Dr. Brain Breaker. Nice puzzle, it looks great and it's probably quite a difficult one. After we have selected the model and downloaded it, we need to import it into a special 3D editor, where we can look at the result that we will get after the printing. We can also choose a color, and I had a couple of choices – orange, beige, yellow, but what I liked the most was the combination of metallic and green. I really like the combination of these colors and I think they should look very nice. Now let's start printing. If you think that this is it and now we can insert our flash drive into the printer and start typing, it's not. The most difficult and interesting things lie ahead. When we have already selected the model and selected the colors, we proceed to the most difficult part of the preparation for 3D printing. After that, we import the model into Slicer, special software that creates code for 3D printers, to make it operate correctly during the printing process. And to do that, we have to enter a huge number of parameters. You can see here on the left side the whole list of parameters, which consists of thousands of settings, and you have to choose the right value in each of them, in order to make the quality, temperature, height of the layer and printing speed the most suitable for us. Using Slicer, we can see how each layer would look like. For example, our skull, the base of our puzzle, will be printed like this. It will be filled with these special hexagons inside to save material, but to make a model durable enough. Also, there are a lot of difficulties here, and they are going to be a little bit challenging for the printer. When the lid starts printing, we print it almost in the air, and it begins to hover over inside these filling elements. Some of the first layers here will be printed in the air. It's not an easy job for a printer, but I think it will deal with it and we can do it. We have created G-code, entered all the values, now we can save this code to the flash drive. And then we insert the flash drive into the printer with a great pleasure and ave. By the way, the program tells us it's going to be printed in about 14 hours and 50 minutes. But in fact it's going to take a lot longer, I think we should multiply this time by one and a half or even two. But I have no doubt that it will weigh exactly 235 grams. Well, let's get started!
So now the printer is starting to warm up. Let's look how it's going. The extruder is heated to 90 degrees and the canvas is heated to 27 and a half degrees. But we have to heat the canvas to about 70 degrees, because plastic requires this temperature. As you can see all the values are set, now we just have to wait for the printer to start printing. Now when all the values have been set and the printer is warming up, we can go to the printer display and choose a 3D model stored on the flash drive and start printing it. Now when the printer is fully heated and the temperature reaches the required values, printer will automatically start printing, we just have to wait. Printing the first layer is one of the most important steps in 3D printing. In most cases, printing quality of the wall model depends on how well the first layer sticks to the canvas and how well it is printed. We are doing really well with the first layer. As you can see, the line by line is very smooth. I hope that now it's easier to understand how 3D printing works. As you can see, this layer of plastic line by line, layer by layer, melts off the printing head. A certain amount of plastic melts out into a certain place. The printer uses printing parameters we set in the slicer. Well, the printing has been initiated and it's going quite successfully. I hope everything will be alright. I just have to wait until tomorrow to see the result of the printing of the first part of our puzzle. But you will see it in a few seconds. My god, 20 hours and 51 minutes, that's a lot longer than I thought it would be, but it just turned out to be really awesome. God, it looks so stunning, it's time to take it off the canvas. Oof. Great, it looks really cool. Once I had a situation when I was taking a ready-made model of the canvas, I accidentally ripped off some of the lower layers, they remained glued to the table. The model went bad, lots of hours of printing went down the drain. I don't even know which way to get to it. Or? I guess uh, this way. Yeah, boy, wow! Just look at how great the colors are on its sides, I'm really happy with it. But that's only half the work, because we still need to print a lot of stuff to fill the brain. There are a lot of details here too, I don't know how many printing sessions it's going to take, so there is no time to wait. Let's do it! The difficulty of the next construction is that it's not one big piece, there is a large number of small elements, and as far as I can see, there are 28 elements from each side. It means I have to do at least two printing sessions. And now the biggest challenge is not only to customize the print, but also to place on the canvas as many details as possible. I've already done six. Seven, eight, and I think that's it, they don't fit. 
I haven't printed out the puzzle yet, but I already have to solve it. It turned out, putting all these 28 elements, which is exactly how many pieces you can put in one half of the brain, on the table was a very difficult task. No matter what, I've already done all the settings. It's going to be done this way. All I have to do is to save everything to the flash drive. As you can see, the estimated printing time is 15 hours and 37 minutes. 196 grams of plastic will be used to print this model. Alright, I got the flash drive out and now it's printing time. Here we go. Well, the headbrain printing is running. Headbrain printing sounds like my diagnosis. It's already started and there is no room for errors. This green colored plastic reel here has exactly enough plastic to print just these two groups of details. So I have no margin for errors. Guys, it took me a week to shoot this video. A lot. A lot of work left behind the scene, so please back me up here, press the like button if you still haven't done it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. I love what's happening right now, even though it's very difficult for me to film it and do it alone at home instead of doing it in a studio. But I hope the result is worth it, if you think so write your opinion in the comments. We're moving forward. Things get out of hand here. I ran another print and this time I decided to divide the elements into three printing sessions. I think it's much more appropriate to do that way. I hope it will lower the risk that printer will mess everything up again. But I had to sacrifice the durability of the details, I had to reduce their weight because I have very little plastic now. I will be very happy if it will be enough for all these printing sessions. Please, back me up, I got into such difficult situations to make this video, but I'm sure you will enjoy the result, so guys, like, subscribe if you haven't done it yet, please.
the printing is finally complete. This is the third printing session, the third couple of our puzzle elements. It's been three days since you last hear my voice. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time and I'm really glad that all the details have finally been printed out. Let's take them off the glass and remove the support structure. This printing lasted almost 10 hours. Each of these three batches of details was being printed for 10 hours. Damn, I've never printed anything for that long. This is probably one of the longest projects I've ever done, and I hope the result will be worth the time. The details are pretty easy to separate from the glass. But let's see if we can separate the wall support structure as well. And these are all the details that I printed out during three printing sessions. There's a huge amount and I'm kind of afraid to imagine how I'm going to put all this together. Since we cannot print in thin air and the laws of physics and gravity also account for 3D printing, some objects with overhanging parts need a support structure. Let's look at this piece here and this element here. They are completely printed in thin air. So the slicer and the printer build this kind of supporting structure which doesn't allow printer to print in the air, giving them some kind of support. Of course, when the details are printed, we can easily remove the support to make the detail look as it should. Ok, that's it. There are so many details, I'm going to freak out trying to solve it. Finally, all the printed details of this puzzle are on my desk. I can see now it's going to be one of the most difficult puzzles I ever solved. Because I've never solved such a big 3D puzzle. This will be my first experience. To be honest, I'm very excited about the fact that this puzzle was made by me personally with my 3D printer. As usual, I'll be timing it and see how long it takes me to solve this puzzle. You can make a suggestion in the comments, how fast do you think I can solve this puzzle? I push the start button and the first thing I'm going to do is to divide these details into two batches, because as you can see, there are reflected details of the left and right hemisphere of the brain here. Apparently they are going to look the same, so I need to find the same details and put them into two batches. It's gonna take some time, hopefully not too much. Ok, here are the same details, I'm doing it pretty fast. Hmm, I can find the same details. Oh, here they are.
Ok, I spent about 7 minutes just dividing the details symmetrically, well, I think we can get started. Well, I think we can get started, this is going to be very difficult, but wish me luck. Here we go. It fits well from one side here. Here we have these special extra recesses around the perimeter of the head. And uh, you can guess where the element might uh, go to. But it doesn't really help me now. So where did I get it from? That's the first problem. This piece was here. Maybe I should start with some central parts, like this. These big details are going to be right in the middle, because we can't put them anywhere else. So the details are fixed fairly and it seems like we're doing it right. But I'm not sure that's how it should be. What if I'll try to solve one hemisphere and then another separately? I think uh, we're getting somewhere, I hope we're doing it right. Well, at least the puzzle is symmetrical, it's reflected, because otherwise I couldn't have done anything about it at all. Now we are in the second row. It's a perfect match and at times like this I really don't want to give up and I believe that I can solve the puzzle. God, it's awesome, it's an amazing puzzle, very difficult and very cool. Great, so far I have managed to place the biggest elements. I see the niche for them, I see them match this detail, it fits into the hole inside. It's cool, but the hardest part, the smallest details are ahead of us.
hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Damn, just look at the amount of the details I've already used. But I still have a lot of details left here. I want to show you this from the outside, but I'm afraid to break it. Look at this chaos inside. This is the most difficult puzzle I've ever solved, a very difficult one. Actually, I don't really like puzzles, but to be honest, this is the kind of puzzle that drives me crazy. Whew. Let's move on. By the way, look, I've been putting this puzzle together for an hour. I hope I will solve this puzzle faster than the printer printed it. I'm already doing it faster and I need to find a detail to fit into this hole. I don't even know how to show it to you. Here, in this little hole which is inside. It is fenced in by other elements and I can't put this detail in like this. Probably right now I'm going to disassemble everything I've just put together. The most important thing is to do it carefully and not forget where each detail was located. <laughs> you know what? I have to take apart the whole puzzle. Everything. Oh no. Let's try another way. I'm going to solve one hemisphere and then I'm going to deal with another one. Because it's driving me mad. Now, this way, yeah. And that is all. I'm confused. I'm going to remove the top layer, it's getting in the way. I'm going to leave only those elements which touch the main part. I have more or less remembered where every detail was. Maybe I remembered, I'm not sure. But we put this one right here and this one here. Okay. Okay, well. We have to pull out these two elements and put them together to make one block. And now we need to put that block in the right place. I couldn't have put it in separately. So, the next thing we are going to do is to fill all these holes down here so that we can use them as a base. And we can put those pieces on the top of it. Apparently, apparently it won't be easy, but I think we can handle it. I put together the first layer here. This detail here was the most difficult one. Now I'm going to try to find a reflection of this detail and show it to you. Look, it has this end and this one. A horizontal one and a vertical one. And there are two holes which fit them. It's amazing. Cool. So, I completely filled the first layer. Now I have to fill in the remaining parts inside, with these four elements. Everything else is going to be the roof for our brain. I think it's going to be a lot easier to solve the puzzle at the end than it was at the beginning. Ok, I've already spent an hour and a half solving this puzzle, and I hope I can solve it in at least two hours. This part has to be here, 
Definitely. I only have to move this structure. Okay, that's it. And this one is reflected. I'm glad that it's symmetrical puzzle. And then we have this detail. Yeah, it's going to be quick. Cool! <laughs> I'm really happy. This piece was right here, I remember. This one goes here. Now we are building what we have built before, so it's not that hard. Now we have much smaller elements and it's easier to find the right ones. I'm looking for the holes to see where the detail fits and I often find the right piece from the first time. For example, this one goes here. Now I have to fill in all the place in the back, because there is the least work done here. Oh no! We're carefully putting it back together, luckily I remember how it was put together, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. And the last couple of details, where should I put them? Here. And... That's it! That's it! 1 hour and 37 minutes! It looks so cool! I didn't think it would be so beautiful! Crazy! I'm delighted with the result, and I really like the way the puzzle was printed out, and I really enjoy solving this puzzle. And I'm so excited that I managed to combine my two favorite hobbies, puzzle solving and 3D printing. So in this video I was really detailed about how I was making models with my 3D printer. In the next videos I will definitely use a 3D printer to create new puzzles and solve them. But I will not focus so much on the process of creating the model itself, I will pay more attention to the solution. So thank you so much for watching this video through. Every person who watched the video till the end means a lot for me, because you are the most dedicated, the best audience I've ever had. Thank to you personally. If you are on my channel for the first time, welcome. This is the kind of content that awaits you here if you subscribe and like this video. I want to remind you that as soon as one of my videos hits 100,000 likes, I will immediately start designing a Rubik's Cube, which I will print out with my 3D printer. So thanks everybody so much for watching, this was Cubastic, see you next week, bye and have a good time!